May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to exposing woke student pro tourist view on Palestine. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, decolonization is inherently violent. If an uprising is what it takes to free the people of Palestine, that's what it takes. It's just, it's just as simple as that. Yeah, I think people just need to wake up, take some action. We say to our leaders, it's about the time to take action too. Hamas has been designated as a terrorist organization, but Israel hasn't. You know, Israel's. Do you think Israel should be designated as a terrorist organization? Well, if the shoe fits, wear it, right? <laughs> so, what's your opinion on the current situation in Israel and Palestine? Well, I think the um, occupation that Israel has been conducting basically since its inception, 1948. I think it's the natural sort of conclusion of uh, 80 years of uh, colonialism and then later apartheid within the existing Israeli territories. I think the armed resistance that has been conducted by several Palestinian groups, I think it is very much chickens coming home to roost sort of situation. It wouldn't happen if there wasn't a backdrop of that sort of uh, colonial and quite brutal colonial history that has been conducted by Israel. So do you think Hamas is justified in what they're doing at the moment or would you condemn their actions? Uh, so I wouldn't specifically say I condone the specific group Hamas because that's illegal in this country now. But I, don't th I think uh, the Palestinians as a people have a right to resist in whatever method they specifically see as useful. I don't think, with specific things like indiscriminate killing of civilians, I don't know how useful that is. I certainly wouldn't say I'm pro that. Uh, although it, I, on a purely tactical basis, I don't know how useful I would say it is. And I, I wouldn't condemn it either. I think uh, decolonization is inherently violent. Uh, the way you get around that is you don't colonize, basically. It's uh, chickens coming home to roost, like I said. While Hamas, definitely, there has been, uh, there's not much restraint in the way they act. They aren't a uh, military in the same way that the IDF is. But in that sense, they, I think they are held, the IDF has to be held to a higher standard if they are supposedly a Western military with their rules of engagement. Do you see any possible solution for the region? Uh, not that can be uh, conducted peacefully, I don't think. I don't think Israel wants to conduct something peacefully. The Palestinians don't have a choice. I think um, what, what had been going on before was a very slow destruction of the state of Palestine. What is now going on is a very quick one. I don't think, uh, I, I think basically it comes to successful armed resistance from the Palestinians or nothing, or there will be no Palestine left. I think the closest we will have to a solution if the Israelis win is what the Israelis think of a solution, which is the destruction of the state of Palestine. I don't think there's going to be a peaceful solution anytime soon that doesn't involve some sort of genocide or displacement. And it's just, it's such a complicated issue. But the reality of it is that Israel is a colonist power. And I would think that Palestine really does deserve to be free. <laughs> like, it's just... In what no way could you it. see it being free as such? I would think the best way to go about it is really, like... Uh, is really just the dissolution of Israel. Honestly, it's something that... I really hope gets sorted out soon, but in the grand scheme of things, I think people just really need to research their history. They really need to look into it and see that in so many cases, in practically every other case, Israel is in the wrong. I'm not condoning the fact that there's so much violence going on by so many different groups on both sides of the conflict, but the reality is, the reality is, is the Palestinian people are fighting for themselves. And so long as they get their freedom that they've been fighting for like over 75 years or roughly 75 years, uh, until they get that, they aren't going to be like as focused on the fact of who's leading the charge. So obviously there's very like... Uh, so would you say that Hamas are justified in what they're doing then? Well, in terms of their goal to free Palestine from Israel control, yes. But in terms of uh, the actions of violence that are going on, obviously not because violence overall is not a way to achieve the like means that you need but if an uprising is what it takes to free the people of Palestine that's what it takes it's just it's just as simple as that we've had cases of um, uprisings before specifically in things like uh, Vietnam my dream solution is that the Western powers like the UK government like the US government and several others they all come together and realize that they made a mistake in authorizing the creation of such a state and for basically being uh, the reason that so much death is going on in that region and that every, everything, every ideology has basically been hypercharged by their involvement. It's simple as that, I think. So what's your opinion on the Israel-Palestine conflict? Um, well, it's obviously a horrible situation. Um, 
I do feel like the media is representing a false narrative with Israel. In, in what sense? In terms of like how long the conflict has been going on. Um, but I mean, and like now with the, the terrorist group coming in and like just pushing that forward, that story forward, instead of like all the atrocities that's been happening over the years, you know? Um, but I can't, I'm not too educated, I guess. And so would you say you condemn the way in which Israel's acted? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. And so um, Hamas is on the other side. Would you condemn them as well or say they're justified? Um, <laughs> that's a tricky question. Because um, <laughs> obviously they, it's horrible what they did as well. But um, it's hard to say if that's justified through for all the years of like damage that's happened in in Palestine because of Israel. So you men mentioned obviously condemnation of Israel. Can you name any of the atrocities which said they've committed? I couldn't name any off the top of my head, but I, I just know that they've been just pushing the board. I mean, from what I've been told, so it's not it's not a, a full, you know, but um, they've just been pushing on the border for like the last like forever, pretty much, the Holy Land as such. Um, but yeah, that's it really. I don't really know. So what's your opinion on the Israel-Palestine conflict at the moment? So the first thing I want to say, I'm a person myself, and I think the terminology of conflict is wrong because a conflict just denotes that there's an equal side, you know? Both states, both countries have the same kind of weapons, same stuff, but it actually don't. They actually don't. Uh, this has been going on for 75 years. I think the world, it's about time they're waking up to it. It didn't just happen two weeks ago or, you know, suddenly, you know, they said, oh, why don't we do something about it? You know, 75 years ago, my granddad was expelled from his country. He had to leave. There's been genocide and massacres. Um, yeah, I think people just need to wake up, take some action. We say to our leaders, it's about the time to take action too. Hamas has been designated as a terrorist organisation, but Israel hasn't, you know. Israel's Do you think Israel should be designated as a terrorist organisation? Well, if the shoe fits, wear it, right? <laughs> You know, um, it doesn't matter how much funding they receive from the U.S. government or any Western government. You know, people say it's a Western outpost, whatever your opinion is. If you are a nation state and you want to be recognized as a sovereign state, that doesn't give you a right to kill innocent people, cut off food and water to people who won't receive it from anywhere else, or, you know, attack any aid given to these people. An open-air prison, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter where they're from, it doesn't matter what their lineage is, it doesn't matter who their ancestors are, you know, they have a right to live where they stand. You can't just kill them because you, you know, disagree with their existence. I, I don't agree with how the European settlers came to Palestine. You know, Europe didn't want them. They were welcomed in Palestine. People love to, I don't know, everyone's wrong at this point. Who's right, you know? I think that the, the atrocities of what's going on in Palestine right now are unspeakable. So would you then condemn or justify Israel's response to the current terror attack? I feel, again, that it's very complicated. It does seem to me that it seems a bit out of proportion, uh, given the power and the presence they already have over that area uh, and the situations, the relative inequities in terms of Israel's resources versus what Gaza has, and Gaza being essentially the prisoners of Israel. So do you think Hamas are then justified in what they're doing at the moment? I don't really want to address justification, um, frankly, but uh, as always, when, with an act of war, there's a retaliatory response. Uh, as I said, it seems to me that Israel's response was perhaps out of proportion. Um, again, this particular incident has to be considered within the larger context of the Israel-Palestine long-standing uh, conflict and standoff. So I think it's quite complicated and difficult to sum up in a few words. <laughs> well, I, I'm just laughing because of this video. Anyway, I am in no way supporting violence, but I, I don't care what has been happening since, you see. What I'm after is what is happening now. And if I say what is happening now, uh, I'm talking about what happened, I think, um, October last year, you know, 
how the attack came on is or, or how the attack came on the citizen of israel you know i I've, I've been watching the video looking for someone that would tackle the issue okay this is what happened and this is what i think you know because if if you say that um, israel have been you know making you feel like you are not free or you know like putting keeping you guys as you know prisoners or something then it's nice for you to come out and talk you know and i think when they did their peace accord you know when israel allowed you know the palestine to have gaza in the year 2005 you know everyone lived in peace you know israel was providing water you know providing aid and everything even if they did not fully have control over you know gaza and i feel like if you don't like the way they are running things the thing is you would come out and protest that is that is it but going to a different country killing their citizen and expecting them to fold their hands and look at you no matter how you paint it it is wrong okay let me make example with nigeria um i think when nigeria became nigeria you know when when the northern part of nigeria was joined to the southern part of nigeria and when they like before we were called nigeria you know it took it, it took the help of so many countries you know to to bring peace into nigeria because it was always you know fighting the northern part of nigeria fighting the southern part of nigeria but when their both leaders decided that okay i think this is what we need to do this is let's sign peace accord you know so that we can both live in peace let's lay down our weapon and grow our country together i think that is what led to a better nigeria because now we saw ourselves as equal it was beyond your tribe it was beyond you are from the north and from the south we can't work together you are from the north and from the south we can't do this together now nah, that ceased to exist you know it was more of um we are nigeria so let's work as nigerians that is it so if if i'm saying gaza or sorry okay if i'm saying gaza and i think the people of gaza were all living in peace with israel you know i, I noticed people from gaza could easily you know drive into you know israel and you know if you are working in israel you can just drive in you can do your work and drive back home it was a bit peaceful so everything started again when hamas came in you know to attack israelis and i think that is what led to this conflict you know you don't come to my house and cause damage to my house and expect me not to return the favor to you or pretend as if nothing happened it's never done okay you agreed for the peace accord you agreed that okay you want gaza to yourself and you have been giving gaza so why then are you complaining that okay um okay i don't know why didn't you attack them and after attacking them they decide to cut their water supply and now you're complaining no you're not supposed to cut so you expect to attack israel and they will do nothing to you like they will just pretend as if nothing happened you know keep on giving you water supply keep on giving you food keep on giving you aid it does not make sense to me because if if it's me if i'm the president i will do the same thing because I, i'm trying to help out i'm trying to even if i don't have control over gaza anymore you know after signing the 20th and um, 2005 you know agreement i have you know less control over gaza but see i still try my best to supply things to you because i feel like it's just like um i give birth to children you know, and my children feel like, yes, we are old enough to take care of ourselves. And I say, okay, no problem. You can, you can be yourself, you know, enjoy, you know, be yourself. But I will not stop providing for you because I know that, yes, even if I don't provide everything for you, I know you will need certain things, you know, to, to help you, you know, enjoy your life. So I, 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 and I keep on providing and you, you now decide to come to my house and set my house ablaze and you expect me to keep on providing for you. It does not work. Okay. Like if you put yourself in the shoe of Israel, it's, it's what they are doing right now is based on what happened in October 7th. And I don't blame them for that. I don't I don't care what they've been doing in the past, okay? But you guys agreed for peace and you signed that, okay, let's, let's have peace. And you said, okay, for us to have peace, you need to give us this. And they listened to you. So why then do you come like and attack them? And a day that is dedicated for them to respect, you know, to celebrate, you know, you decide to attack them on that day because you feel that day is their vulnerable day. I feel... It's not fair, okay? There are other ways to resolve issues. The same way you guys were able to, you know, resolve the issue back then in 2005, you would have been able to resolve it, you know, peacefully without shedding any blood. And now you've, you've done the unthinkable. You're expecting them to just, you know, let it go. Simply because, I, I don't know, but it, it's really funny. And I was expecting someone to tackle that issue, you know, say something about it. Because 
everyone that spoke today were just shying away from it, you know, trying to avoid the topic, you know, yeah, I don't agree with what they did, but no. go there, you know, let's call it spade a spade. For every action, there's an equal, you know, reaction. You, you cause something, so there's, there's always a cause and effect. So what led to this is, is always starting from this. So you, you can't, assuming Israel agreed to give you Gaza, and they came back and attacked you, I will blame Israel for that. No, they gave you what you wanted in 2005. So why then did you come back again to attack them? I don't know. It's just it's just annoying. Anyway, if, if if I'm to say my opinion, it's really really annoying. Anyway, let me know where you take the conversation. It is your first time visiting the channel. Click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. And remember this.